So around a week ago, somebody commented on one of my videos and suggested that I make a game in 20 minutes. And I was like, sure, I could technically make a game in 20 minutes, but it wouldn't be any fun. And then I realized, I've never done that. So how could I say that I could do it if I've never tried? Plus, it seems like it would be a lot of fun. And I've been working on a lot of long form content, like I'm, I'm working on Subway Hell right now, and maybe it could be a good break. So I put that idea away as something I could do at some point. And then my adult life was like, hey, how about you do all of this extra stuff? And I realized that at some point meant this week. I'm going to try to make a game in 20 minutes. But before we get into the video, my name is Helper Wesley, I've made these games, and I make weekly devlogs. A couple quick caveats. I've made the art beforehand, and I of course already have the game in mind. And so with that out of the way, I started the timer and got to it. I started by trying to get everything into the scene as fast as possible. Oh right, I haven't explained yet. This game is going to be similar to those games where you have the character running around at the bottom of the screen trying to collect things as they fall, but instead of things falling on the player, I decided to flip the script and be really creative by making the things go up towards you. <laughs> that's, that's what I decided to do. So your player is falling down into this bottomless pit that's on an asteroid, I guess? And you get two controls, you get to move from one side to the other, and the objective is to collect the crystals while avoiding the worm. And of course to get the highest score possible. This sort of game seemed like the kind of thing I could pull off in a short amount of time. The only shorter game that I could think of was one like this where you have to dodge everything that's coming up. And that's the entire game, is to try to stay alive for as long as possible. Whereas in this game I have to deal with high scores and different crystals having different score values and things. And in 20 minutes, that's cutting it kind of close. So to set this up, I put five spawners down at the bottom of the scene, and those will all have object variables that are randomly generated every tick. And by tick, I mean every resetting of the timer. And when the timer resets, if the object variable lands on a number that associates with one of the events that spawn things, then that will spawn that thing it's supposed to spawn, and reset that object variable down to zero, so that it can be used again next time. Once I had it set so that things were flying up towards you and you could move back and forth, I had to make it so that when you actually collided into them, something happened. So to start with, there's a global variable called score, and when you run into crystals, you gain points based on which crystal it is, and if you run into the worm, you lose 10. I figured this was a very simple way to set it up, and that way I wouldn't need to worry about winning and losing, it was just collecting crystals and avoid worm. And as you can see, it's basically working. I mean, the spawn rate is terrible, of course, so I need to balance some things, but I'm able to pick things up, and I'm able to lose points and gain points. So, ha! To my past self, I totally could pull this off. And because I had time to spare, I decided to try to make a background that I had in my mind as a stretch goal. And this ate up the rest of my time. I'll show you later what I was trying to accomplish, but of course, you know, the timer ran out. And so what I was left with was this messy thing that you, you're probably seeing on screen right now. But I did it, right? This is technically a game in 20 minutes. It's not very good and no one's gonna wanna play it, but it's technically a game. <laughs> okay, so now to fix the mess. I hate having projects that aren't enjoyable or aren't as good as I think I could have done or just look bad on me. Like, okay, Delta Chase. I made that because the mood struck me and I thought it would be a cool thing to make. It's not very good. It breaks, it's got some bugs, and I'm not a big fan of it. But that thing somehow took off on itch and was like the 300th most popular game for a while. And it was the number one game made with my game engine for a while, and it was the number one of this and the number one of that tag, and I'm just like, but I made it in 48 hours, and these people are like, they're going to see, this is their first time ever meeting me. Ah! So I'm going to try to make this game a little better, starting with the terrible particle effect that I put in the background. So what I wanted was that cool 
effect that you see in some really well done games that I can't think of right now, but basically I want rocks and debris to be coming up, but also hidden enough that you don't think that they're objects in the game, as well as some line effects that make it look like you're falling. So hopefully on screen right now you're seeing what I was trying to accomplish. That's it. That right there is what I was trying to do. And I didn't want to spend too much time on this, so I basically gave myself the time limit of the rest of the night. Which of course means that I stayed up way too late, but anyhow. I then created a start menu with a high score on it, so that when you play the game, you have a reason to go back and play again because your high score is displayed on the main start menu. And that way you can keep playing it and keep trying to beat your old score. Because I'm not a big fan of leaderboards where you're competing against other people, but I really like playing against yourself. You don't get mad when you play against yourself, and nobody is judging you. I like high scores that you play with your s no, don't say that Wesley. Anyhow, so I basically decided that this game is going to be put up on my Google Play Store for people to play, and so that means that they have to be able to leave their game and come back and have their high score stay there or else it's going to be resetting every time they play. So I needed a save and load system, and I put that in when you hit the worm. So when you hit the worm, it writes that save score into a file outside of the game, and then when the main start screen comes up, then it pulls that file back out and uses that for your score. Then I needed some sound effects because this whole thing so far has had no sound effects. You're listening to some pleasant music right now, but me playing the game, there was nothing. So I threw in a progressively increasing pitch based on a timer, similar to what I used in Galaxy Bash, but instead of hitting a wall, now it's a timer that resets it back to its default pitch. Next I added a score pop-up. So when you pick up the gems, a text pops up that tells you how much that gem is worth. And this way players know that each one is worth a different amount. You could just look at the high score, but you're not going to look there if you're trying to look down and see what's coming up at you. So the score popping up should help players know which ones are worth more and which ones they should be going after. And I then tried to add some music. Uh, I've, I have created some really good music for video games. Um, nothing that I could sell, of course, but I have created music that's, you know, makes sense in video games, but that really just happens when the mood strikes me, and not on command, because I don't know what I'm doing. So this game has no music, <laughs> because my timer ran out, and now I'm going to bed. But then I woke up in the morning and decided, I like making money, right? People like making money, I like making money. So, I decided to add a add into the game. So now when you run to a worm, your punishment for failing is an ad that pays me. So if you really like me and want to play this game, whenever it goes up at some point, hopefully now, we'll see, you can play the game and just fail at it. Which is definitely one way to support me. <laughs> Anyhow. I took a couple screenshots and made a store page icon, and I've submitted this to Google Play. So if they've accepted it, then hopefully there's a link somewhere to play the game. It's not very good. It's not. Hopefully it'll kill five minutes of your time, and you'll laugh about it. About it, not me, right? Right? <laughs> Alright, that's all I got done this week. So if you enjoy this video, maybe consider clicking on that subscribe button. And if you want to talk to me personally, the link to our Discord is down below. It's called the Game Dev Fireside, and it's a pretty chill place to hang out and talk game dev. And if you decide to click on that link, then I'll see you there.